this is the uh, 24 volt power supply for the LM3886. Of course, I needed a split supply, so I'm using two of them right here. So these are 24 volts, so I'm going to be changing these to where they'll do 28 volts per rail. So you have plus and minus 28 volts. And obviously, I tied the minus and the plus together and the one common, so that'll go to the LM3886 board. But I did one modification to these on the bottom. Here's the modification right here. It's a 10,000 ohm resistor, the top of R18 and right there at, to ground. And this um, changes the voltage from 24 to 28 volts. And I did the same thing in both modules. So there's another one there. So we should have a very nice, well-regulated split supply for the LM3886. Now these boards are very low cost. $8.89. There it is. And these things do come from China. Free shipping. So for about just under $10, you can get two of these for about 9 bucks each and free shipping. That's not bad. <clears throat> these supplies don't come up at the same time, which the 3886 that causes problems with lockup. I put a small circuit here which allows the relay to pull in and when both supplies come up. So we'll look at this now. There it goes. It's on. So we're looking at that supply. 29 volt. And we'll check check the other one now. 28 and a half volts. Here's the completed LM3886 amplifier and I've put it in an ATX power supply box and in a moment we'll look inside to see the guts that uh, I've used with the two switching power supplies and the uh, amplifier board as well. So here's the inside of the uh, case. There's the LM3886 on a heat sink from the, uh, from the uh, microprocessor CPU. Works very nicely. Uh, I made one change on this board. I put a uh, 680 ohm resistor here. I put it in place uh, in parallel with R1K here. And this again is a 680 ohm which increases the gain. This is the shunt resistor which goes to ground for the feedback from this LM3886. And here's the, uh, the two power supplies, one and two. And of course, we have a positive and negative supply here. And that's what provides the power for the amp. Here, of course, is the relay circuit. I've got this one in series with the speaker. This allows both power supplies to come up. Since they don't come up at the same time, again, we need to have a circuit which will allow the amp to either get power and or disconnect the circuit until both supplies are up. And of course, I have a 12 volt fan from the uh, existing ATX power supply. And since it's a 12 volt fan, I took it through a resistor, a 240 ohm, uh, uh, one of the power supplies here. And it runs quite nicely at 10 volts and it keeps this nice and cool. All right, so now put it back together. Connect it. Let's uh, see how it works. So here it is, it's now operating. So we're looking at four ohms altogether. That's two eight ohm resistors in parallel and four ohms from the output here. And then here's the input. This again is connected to an oscillator. And then we're looking at one kilohertz right now. So those resistors are getting nice and toasty. We have course the fan here to cool it for that. Let's look up the scope. I really got the scope connected to it. There's the scope lead. And 49.2 volts peak to peak. We know when we do the math that turns out to be like 75, 76 watts from the amp. But to prove it we'll look at it again. We take 49.2 divided by 2 to get the peak value. There's our peak voltage. Square that so now we take that multiply it times itself. That equals that number. Now we divide that by 4 ohms. That's E squared over R. There's our peak power. This is peak power, but we want RMS. So now we divide that by 2. So there it is, 75.6 watts. Pretty close to 76. So here's the amp again. It's been operating consistently well over an hour now. And it's still producing one kilohertz 
at 49.2 volts peak to peak, which we learned is about 76, like 76 watts into 4 ohms. And uh, the amp is perfectly happy in an ATX case. Um, it's a very solid amp. 